What's up YouTube? This is Brian from Bull Strength coming at you with another video and today we're going to be talking about old school strength exercises that are still useful today. Alright, today we're going to be talking about some old school odd lifts that are still useful for modern training regimens. So when I say odd lifts, I mean specifically lifts that are less commonly used in modern gyms, not necessarily strictly old school. A lot of modern exercises that we use are old school lifts. The bicep curl goes back literally to ancient times. So we're specifically talking about odd lifts that have been kind of forgotten about with time. Alright, and the first exercise is one that probably looks a little off to a lot of people, but is perfectly legitimate. This is known as a cheat curl, which is basically a hip-driven bicep curl. So it's a good way to get a little extra weight on the concentric portion of the bicep curl by using hip drive to get the weight up into the rack. Now this might look pretty dangerous, and if you do this lift wrong, it can be dangerous. So first of all, uh, do not hyperextend. Do not lean back with your back as you're trying to get the weight up. Uh, I know a lot of old school athletes used to do this, but uh, it is really, really bad for your lower back. So definitely do not hyperextend. And the hip drive that you're going to be using with the cheat curl is going to be very similar to what you would be using with the kettlebell swing. Basically, you're going to load your hips up the exact same way, thrust your hips forward into lockout, and then get that curl all the way up into the rack position without leaning back. All right, and the next exercise on this list is one that I refer to as the lateral raise with adduction. Uh, however, the original inventor of this exercise, Eugene Sandow, referred to it as the chest expansion butterfly. So basically, all you're going to do is do a strict lateral raise with your arms fully extended, and then you're just going to basically do a chest fly while you're standing. Just be nice and conservative with the weight here. Uh, this is a very tough exercise, so make sure it's a weight that you can handle pretty easily. And the next exercise is known as a Reeves deadlift, named after famous bodybuilder Steve Reeves. Um, this is an excellent grip building exercise. So basically you're gonna get into a conventional deadlift stance, reach out and grab the plates on either side and just perform deadlifts normally. Like I said, this is excellent for building pinch grip. Uh, you're probably gonna need a little chalk for this one. All right, and the next three lifts that I have here have all been pretty thoroughly covered in separate videos, so I will provide a link for each one as we go over them. And the first one is a Zercher squat, which is basically a front-loaded squat, very similar to a front squat, except the weight is being racked in your elbows, which for a lot of people this can be an issue. If you need to wear some extra compression or maybe use some kind of padding, there's really no shame in that. But anyway, the Zercher squat is a great lift for targeting your quads and also building anterior core stabilization. You can perform this by deadlifting it off the ground, setting it on your lap and racking it that way, but obviously it is much easier to do this lift inside of a power rack on pins. And the next exercise we have here is a Jefferson deadlift, which is very similar to a conventional deadlift, a little bit wider stanced. This is a great deadlift variation for targeting the obliques and the transverse abdominus muscles. So in other words, the muscles that run east to west along your core. And the next exercise we have on this list is the hack squat. It is a very powerful tool for building quad size and is fully endorsed by Tom Platts, which I don't think you really need a bigger endorsement than Tom Platts. The setup is going to be very similar to a conventional deadlift, pretty much exactly the same, except you're going to be standing in front of the bar instead of in back of the bar. Another major difference is that you're not going to be dragging the bar along your legs. Instead, you're going to do everything you can to maintain a straight bar path. And be sure to check the video that I linked here for some tips on how to be able to do that. And the next old school lift that we have on the list is the single arm deadlift, which is obviously an excellent grip builder. For this movement, you're going to be a little bit wider. You're going to be in more of a sumo stance. And all you're going to do is reach down with one arm. I like to keep the other arm nice and tight. Generally, anytime you do a single arm exercise, you want to keep the muscles on your opposite arm as tight as possible, especially up around your shoulders. All right, and the next exercise we have on this list is the barbell get up. Now this is probably one of the most difficult and technical exercises on this list. So before you even think about attempting this exercise, be sure that you're already competent with doing get-ups with a kettlebell or dumbbell prior to using the barbell. The barbell is a lot less stable and is going to cause a lot of torque on your shoulders. So basically you're going to have one leg bent, the leg that you have the barbell on is going to be bent and up close to your butt. 
the other leg is going to be pointed 45 degrees out with your opposite hand parallel to that leg. <clears throat> Then you're going to drive up onto your forearm and roll up onto your hand. Then you're going to lunge back with that leg that's fully extended. And then from there, you're going to stand up. Just be sure to keep your eyes on the barbell at all times. It's going to help you stabilize it a little bit easier. All right, and the next exercise is a lateral hold with kettlebells. Now, I've done a little experimenting with this lift, and I found that it's best used as a sort of finisher after doing lateral raises. So it is good to kind of hold it until your shoulders give out one or two times, but anything past that, it starts to become painful. So that's just in my experience at least. And also I want to say I've tried a few variations of this lift, including the supinated variation where you do it with your palms up. And I just want to say that this is absolute trash. It creates a crap load of tension on your bicep tendon and nothing about it feels right. So definitely do the palms down version and avoid the supinated version. Now there's also a variation where you hold the kettlebells in a front raise position. And I just want to say this one is also pretty good. All right, and the next exercise is a kettlebell juggle. So this is a very basic kettlebell juggle move, but it is still very fun to do. A kettlebell juggling used to be a popular competitive sport, and it's still super popular in Russia and different Slavic countries, but here in the US, it's very rarely seen. So basically all it is is a single arm kettlebell swing with a bit of a flip. Now this is obviously gonna take some practice and I would advise that you do this at home uh, with your whatever kettlebells you have at home. I wouldn't do this in a commercial gym. It's gonna make a lot of noise and you're definitely gonna annoy the staff. So what you're gonna do is drive the weight up with your hips like you're doing any other type of kettlebell swing. And then as soon as the kettlebell gets about parallel with the ground, you're gonna flip your hand forward, spin the kettlebell 360 degrees, then you're gonna catch the kettlebell and swing it back. Once you get this one down, uh, like I said, it's a very fun lift. Um, it's great at developing better hand-eye coordination and it's just generally fun. And the last exercise we have is the bottom up kettlebell press. Now, just like with the barbell get up, this is a more advanced exercise. I would say you should already have a decent amount of strength in the shoulder press before even attempting this. But once you get the form down with this one, it is an excellent exercise for building shoulder stabilization. And I know of at least a few physical therapists that use this for rehabilitation. Just be sure to go very light with this one. Be very conservative with the weight. All right, that's pretty much it for the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through the links below, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.